News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Hello, I'm Tom Waite. Here are your top stories. President Biden has touched down in Los Angeles. He and the First Lady are here for a weekend of fundraising. KKL News reporter Joy Benedict is in Westwood with a look at the security and traffic effects and protests. That certainly has been a very busy day here in the Westwood community in preparation of the arrival of President Joe Biden. You can see a very large presence by the Los Angeles Police Department as they're trying to keep people out of the street that then leads to where the fundraiser is taking place. Over here to the left is Holmby Park, and that is where there was also a demonstration earlier today hoping to grab the attention of the president. But take a look at this video from earlier before his arrival. This is the area where the fundraiser is taking place tonight. We weren't allowed to fly after he landed at LAX, but earlier this afternoon, you can see the chairs and stuff set up to what is expected to be a whirlwind fundraising tour of Los Angeles, as the president is expected to hit six different locations in the next day and a half, with the first being tonight in Westwood. President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden will attend a sold out fundraiser with co hosts that include Steven Spielberg, Shonda Rhimes, Rob Reiner, Lenny Kravitz is even slated to perform. Former Speaker Nancy Pelosi also set to appear at the fundraiser, which is being hosted by James Costas, a former ambassador to Spain, and Michael Smith, an interior designer both well known in the Democratic fundraising circuit. But of course, as expected, with a presidential visit with a leader of the free world came protests. Biden, Biden, you can't hide! Biden, Biden, you can't hide! We turned you a genocide! We turned you a genocide! Biden, Biden, you can't hide! Biden, Biden, a few hundred people came out to Holmby Park nearby this afternoon for a pro Palestinian rally. They were loud, they were vocal about America's involvement with Israel and wanting the nation to do more to protect innocent Palestinian lives caught in the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Of course, the presidential fundraiser already taking place right now at this hour here in this community. And as I mentioned, the first of many that are slated over the weekend, as this is the first time the president has been here to Southern California to fundraise since making that announcement back in April that he was, in fact, running for re-election. So certainly more to come on this visit tonight and many more this weekend. From Westwood, I'm Joy Benedict, KCAL News. The man accused of attacking a grandfather pushing a stroller in Calabasas has been charged. According to the L.A. County District Attorney's Office, Angel Sanchez is facing one count each of battery with serious bodily injury, child abuse under circumstances likely cause great bodily injury or death, and corporal injury to a child. The attack happened Tuesday afternoon. L.A. County Sheriff's say that even though the stroller fell over, the child was inside, but he's okay. The 60-year-old grandfather had some pain, but is also all right. And just an hour before the attack, officials say the 29-year-old suspect also attacked a 14-year-old boy. Metro is cracking down on drivers who park in bus lanes. KKL News reporter Lauren Posen shows us the high-tech way the agency plans to do it. Metro is putting drivers on notice who park in bus lanes. I'm Lauren Posen in Culver City. There goes a bus right now. A hundred of these cameras are going to be put on the windshields of buses, and they're going to be looking for drivers who are parked right about here, right where this bus lane is. Because what's been going on is when the buses come through here and a car is parked here, and it might not be a car, it might be a delivery truck, any type of vehicle parked where it's not supposed to be, it's causing major backup times for the Metro. And they wanna send a message to drivers that you cannot park here. So you're gonna hear from the developer of this uh, camera and also Metro riders, what they have to think or what they have to say about this new program. We'll have that for you tonight on KCAL News. All right, now to our weather. Powerful winds in some areas tonight, like Puerto Ranch there, and they might get even stronger this weekend. And along the coast, we are tracking high wind warnings. A live look at Santa Monica tonight. What can we expect for the weekend? Danny Ruberti has those answers in your next weather. Hi, Danny. Hey, Tom. Happy Friday to you. Yeah, it's all about the winds tonight, and actually, they are going to strengthen as we go into our Friday night, early Saturday morning. And in many areas, they are going to be howling. Some of these winds might even wake you up. 
in the middle of the night. So let's talk about those warnings and advisories. These areas shaded in purple, these are the high wind warnings. This is where the winds will be the strongest. We're talking gusts up to 60 miles per hour. It includes our LA County, Ventura County mountains. You can see Santa Clarita stretching down towards Thousand Oaks into Malibu. And then the yellow right there is indicating the wind advisory. So areas like Glendale in that, and we're also seeing parts of Orange County and also the Inland Empire. This actually doesn't include Riverside right now or areas like Corona, but everywhere is going to be a bit breezy. We could see gusts up to about 45 miles per hour in these areas shaded in yellow. So you can see Mission Viejo, Anaheim in those areas, and that's all going to lead to the high fire danger that we're dealing with this weekend. And you know the drill when we're dealing with these Santa Ana's. I mean, our relative humidity goes down. It's really dry out there. Things are windy. It's warm. And so if any fires start, they spread quickly. It's these areas shaded in red. Most of the areas where we are seeing those wind advisories and warnings. San Bernardino down to Temecula, gusty winds and very low relative humidities. So let's talk about what's next because not everyone is going to see this win. But as we go into tonight, uh, late tonight, early tomorrow morning, that's when it's going to peak. It'll be dry, breezy, and warm all weekend. So aside from the winds, it's going to be a really nice weekend, cooler by Monday, and no rain for now. I don't know if you're like me and you want some of that rain to make it feel more like the holidays. For the next week, we won't be seeing that. We're going to check in on those winds right now. Calm for most of us, but areas like Santa Clarita, Simi Valley, seeing gusts between 20, 25 miles per hour. And so things, this is just kind of a taste of what's to come as we go into our weekend. Santa Clarita, you wake up tomorrow morning and it's going to be a breezy start and a chilly start. Low 50s by about 6 o'clock. Winds uh, between 20 and 25 miles per hour. And that's going to be the case for the first half of your day. But these winds aren't going to last or be as strong all weekend. So coming up at 8 on KCAL, we're going to be breaking down for you hour by hour when these winds move in, when they ramp up, and what it's going to feel like for your weekend. I think you're going to like it. That's coming up at 8. Tom. All right, thanks, Danny. We are halfway through our Chips for Kids toy drive, and we still need your help to collect our goal of 100,000 toys. Our Amy Johnson and Ross Palumbo were in Thousand Oaks today. We are here at the Walgreens off into Park Road, and I mean, how could you have any more fun than hanging with these two men in red? Of course, Santa and Chipper and all of our friends from the CEHP. We've been here collecting toys throughout the day, and we feel so lucky that so many of you have come down to donate a new unwrapped toy. You know, it has been an amazing day. We still have about a half hour, just more than a half hour to go. We're still collecting those unwrapped gifts, but joining me right now, Officer April Elliott, how are we doing so far this year? We're doing great. Uh, you guys have not disappointed. Uh, we've got thousands of toys here. We're starting already counting. And we're just so grateful for everybody who's donated that we can give back these toys to you guys. So 33,000 toys so far. We're halfway through the drive leading up to the week of Christmas, right? Yes. And this made a big dent in the goal of we're trying to get to 100,000. Yes, absolutely. We're trying every every toy counts. Mm -hmm. So uh, with your help, we can get it. We can get there in such amazing, such an amazing event. You've been doing this for year after year. This is your first year. It's my first year. So how has it been? It's been great. You know, excited to be part of it this year and uh, looking forward to, you know, uh, giving out those toys to those children. All right. Thank you so much. And I'm going to send it back to Amy right and now. I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. <laughs> All right, and here is a look at the donation information again. If you'd like to donate a new unopened toy, here are some of the drop-off locations across Southern California. And you can also donate online by scanning the QR code on your screen, going to chipsforkids.com, or by texting TOYS to 76278. This has been CBS News Los Angeles, The Rundown. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back live at KCAL News at 8 here on CBS News Los Angeles.